Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We recently had Dr. Sebastiano on our channel to talk about ERA technologies. Today we are honoured to be joined by Ms. Anya Kramer, the CEO of Turn Biotechnologies, the company that Dr. Sebastiano co-founded. In this video, Ms. Kramer introduces the company and its vision. And with that, let me start the interview. So good afternoon, Anya. You are the CEO of Turn Biotechnologies. Um, welcome to Modern Healthy Hong Kong, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, uh, Richard. It's nice to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation. Uh, thank you. So we recently had Dr. Vittorio Sebastiano on to talk about epigenetic reprogramming of aging and uh, the technology. And so it would be really nice if we could go into a bit more detail as, as to kind of where we are in terms of clinical trials and reality of making that available. So uh, would you be able to spend some time and introduce Turn Biotechnologies for our audience, please? Sure, glad to. Um, so Richard, we're, we're based in the Silicon Valley. So we're here in California in a town called Mountain View, which is uh, right next to Palo Alto, which is where Stanford University is based. And as you may know, uh, Turn, was very recently uh, incorporating the technology that was founded, as you mentioned, out of uh, Vittorio Sebastiano's lab uh, in the last year or so. And TURN is now at a point where we are taking that technology and seeing if we can make it translational for uh, ages, uh, diseases of aging and various other, other capabilities um, for us to move the advancement of longevity. Excellent. So can you tell me a little bit about the vision of the company. I mean, is is the idea that you'll offer offer a service or you'll create a product or how, how would you know what's kind of like the vision? All right, now you know that's a great question because obviously coming up with all of these great technologies now need ways to be able to get them to the patient or the consumer uh, as we as we evolve and as uh, as we all know. I think when I think about this seismic shift that's happening in our global population, right? We're seeing this mass uh, adjust of persons over the age of 60. Uh, and we think about now, how will they access all of these treatments? I guess maybe let's start with, where are we with that process? I believe that you know epigenetic uh, reprogramming, or I think of it more simplistically as the rejuvenation and the repair of the cell, right? When we think in that term, um, as we think about bringing those into a usable application, we first have to start with the various ways to be able to accomplish that. So at this stage, the company is in development stage. Um, we are working on preclinical work, which usually consists of animal studies, being able to first assess the knowledge in animal work, which would then be able to be translated into human clinical trials thereafter. Mm -hmm. So, right, when you think of that, um, we are making great progress. So we've been working uh, in animals now and we've been looking at how to advance that in a few different indications. So I think uh, I'm excited about the prospect of where we're heading. You may have seen, uh, I don't wanna kind of uh, repeat what uh, your viewers may already know, but the, the published data that was recently put out in Nature Communications that Victoria may have spoken to, um, we have shown where this now works in numerous different uh, cell types and uh, different indications. Right. So at the moment, you are looking at specific indications, like, uh, so you're not targeting kind of aging as such, you're looking at specific indications, is that kind of- Yeah, so, so I like to think of it, right, as, as short, mid and long term, if you will. So today we're looking at the ability to deliver this um, into an animal, right? Starting at that point. At the next step, we think about this as localized therapies. And localized therapies to me is really a stepping stone towards the longer vision. The longer vision clearly that we would all like to achieve at some point is being able to have a systemic solution that can treat the entire body. But being able to achieve that to me um, is, is a process that we have to go through in a bit more modular approach. At least that's the, the mm. thinking that we're taking right now at turn. So. We're looking at it by therapeutic area, and we're looking at those different therapeutic areas 
than by an indication. And, and really that is so that we can also have a way through the regulatory path and that we can be able to accomplish getting this into the market, into the hands of a, of a consumer. I mean, do you see like the price being something that the general pe general population could, could use? Yeah. I'll tell you that is, I appreciate the question because to me, this is something that's very important, right? When we think about the cost of healthcare in our society today and, and the, the huge, you know, call it trillions of dollars going into health plans and this, um, you know, 25% of the population that is now going into the age of 60 to 65 and over, mm -hmm. um, we know that the price and the cost to be able to, to, to do these things that we're all hoping for and aspiring for um, become a very big component of the conversation. And so I would tell you, yes, I believe it's absolutely possible because when you think about um, manufacturing drugs that are localized therapies, and I'll speak to dermatology again for just a second. When you think about that, the manufacturability would not be more than what it would cost for other, I'll call it like drugs uh, in the traditional um, API or active ingredient sense. Mm. And um, there's no reason why we, and I, I you know, I'll, I'll say this on behalf of Turn, we would not overprice this to the market. So we would absolutely be in line with what we believe would be a fair marketable price. So the end goal is to produce like a, uh, a drug. So, so you, you would be producing like a product that right. would then be distributed through whatever. It's a normal health care. Correct. It, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that open. I think there's many different ways. If you think about society today, um, I think if you think of the landscape of how everything is starting to change and evolve now, even just giving a quick look to this pandemic and how our lives have changed and how we receive yeah. therapies, right? I mean, everything is changing. Um, so I would say as we advance the field of longevity drugs or longevity solutions, I would, I would certainly keep an eye towards um, how we receive those therapies will probably also evolve. And right. I would like to think that, you know, as turn grows and continues to, to deliver those products to market, um, I think we'll see some of that going through traditional channels, right? Um, traditional physician environments. I could see new evolving distribution or points of access or ways patients receive those therapies evolve, certainly. Right. You know, you, today, it, it, here, you know, in the States, we, you see everything from, these nutritional clinics now, right? Delivering everything from IV drips to you see new cryo centers evolving, right? There's a lot of a lot of evolving um, access points. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. It's encouraging to hear about the concrete plans to implement this new technology. In the next interview, Ms. Kramer will discuss the company's plans for clinical trials and FDA approval. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.